Hey, what's up, party sexy, groovy, awesome people. I just wanted to give a real quick message before we get into the video. This is the full version of a main event satellite I played on Club GG. If two hours worth of poker hand analysis is too much for you, I made a highlighted version that is condensed to only the most interesting hands that I played. It's about 25% the length of this, so I'm gonna try and be a real YouTube person thingy. And if you wanna check out that video instead of this one, go ahead and click right here. There should be a link if I learn how to do it properly. Otherwise, enjoy the video. All right, everybody, welcome. This is going to be a full hand analysis of all 347 hands I played in this tournament. This is a satellite to get to the main event of the World Series of Poker. And 11, two eleven thousand dollar packages are on the line for first and second. I'm not going to spoil it. Hopefully later I can come up with a title that doesn't spoil it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go through every single hand. Just a quick little, little how do you do? A quick little uh, explanation for everybody. This top part up at the top is the hand that happened. I'm not going to go through and edit it out and make it dramatic. As soon as I go over to the next hand, you're going to be able to see what happened. But this is more about just the analysis and my thoughts and memories and stuff like that. And then on the bottom half of the screen down here, it goes from left to right. So it starts with the blinds. You can see everybody's action on the flop, turn, and river. Those numbers are the pot size that are underneath the words. And then you can see everybody's name and action. You can even see the percentages on this hand. And then at the very right bottom, you can see who wins. So this is really cool. I don't have to memorize anything. I don't have to take notes. I can just go through and show all the stuff. So all the hands that I fold or I'm not a part of or not super interesting, I'm just going to skip. And yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of exciting hands, a lot of crazy hands, a lot of highs, a lot of lows. So let's get into it. We start off already on hand number two i know it's coming next so you see i have eight deuce off i'm random here on the bottom by the way uh against buckeye bias and right off the bat this hand is a misclick <laughs> you can see pre-flop somebody raises and i accidentally they you know i'm on my phone doing this doing a bunch of other stuff and I accidentally called uh so we go heads up to a flop and i flop a deuce and he bets and i'm just like eh I flop middle pair. Another thing about this, by the way, is there are re-entries. You can get two re-entries to get back into this tournament. So I just said, ah, eh, flop a pair. I'll shove it. If he has a big pair, cool. I'll gamble. And if not, then we'll get him to fold. Some some early notes, some early strategy. Uh, it pays the top two get a seat. The top two get a seat into the ten thousand dollar main event of the World Series of Poker. But there's like you know thirteen hundred plus something people in this tournament so very and just to be clear this is club gg you pay 50 bucks a month there isn't an actual buy-in a cash buy-in you get you use a ticket tickets that you win on the site and you enter this so it's not like i'm spending like hundreds of dollars to like enter and enter and enter but basically the strategy is to play aggressive gamble try and build up a stack and make a run at it so that's kind of what I did here, just like, eh, flop bottom pair. Like, obviously, calling with eight deuce is bad. Obviously, just shoving bottom pair into the razor is bad. But if I lose, I can re-enter. So if that's what I did. Uh, nothing interesting there. So here's the first example of what I mean. Uh, there's a raise and a, and a call. And there's some dead money in there, so I decided to just shove. Uh, the blinds are 400, so I shove, uh, what is that, 30-something bigs with ace-five suited in the small blind. One guy calls. We get it in against ace-queen. And I literally said before the river, I went, bink, and then just hit the five. So that's what I'm talking about, you know, just taking spots that aren't like like the eight-do spot. That's an extreme example, and that was a misclick, 100% honest to God. Uh, there's no more misclicks throughout this event. But, uh... This type of thing was a calculated gamble. Like, obviously, I'm going to be behind a lot of spots like this. But, you know, I've played a lot of these satellites, and I've had a lot of early exits. And uh, sometimes you just got to sometimes you just gotta get lucky, you know. Got to take chances early, try and build a stack. So that's what I, that's what I did. 
So we got a nice little double up on hand number four. Uh, then keep the heater going. Let's see. looks like uh, there's a raise. We re-raise on the button. And he calls. He checks. Uh, so draw a heavy board. So big hand. Want to try and build the pot. Uh, he folds. So uh, when this little thing that says king 10 at the bottom, I think that means I showed it. So doing a little image manipulation, trying to show him like, see, sometimes, sometimes I have it. Uh, king nine looks like I raised, got a couple calls. Luna let out on this board. Luna wins, uh, uh, which leading is a thing these days. Uh, if you study solver strategy, uh, one of the, there's a lot of situations where the board favors you, where you're supposed to lead out. So when I see something like that. Uh, you can't make crazy assumptions off of one little thing, but when I see somebody like that, uh, it kind of leans me towards thinking that this is somebody who studies. Like you, this is you know fifty bucks a month. You're gonna get a lot of people who just have no idea what they're doing. You're gonna get a lot of people who are just gambling, playing bad, or people who are decent. You're gonna get a wide variety, but then you're also gonna get some people who know what they're doing, and uh, we'll especially preview see that uh, later. Um, so I decided to float with over cards and, uh, position and the back door flush draw, back door straight draw turns a queen and they bet again. Uh, now the nine is, you know, blocking, you know, the hands I want them to have nine, seven, which, uh, is, you know, just decided to let it go. Uh, could think about making a move, them betting into a queen is interesting, but I'm also probably not going to have a bunch of queens that I float other than, you know, like ace queen, king queen. Still an interesting double lead, just something to, to note that they did. Uh, looks like I just folded here. Nothing too crazy. If you always, if you ever want to pause the video or whatever, and then, and just read the hands for yourself. So this one I raised. There was a call and then a shove, and then this is the same type of thing. Uh, if this was the actual main event, you know, or this was like a a tournament with thousands of dollars or whatever on the line, you know, I'm not going to put my whole stack at risk. Going to try and use a, a skill edge, but just uh, ace-10 suited. Just wanted to gamble, go for it, try and build a stack, make a deep run. Like I said, th over a 1,000 people, only the top two get anything uh, worthwhile. You, you get your tickets back that you use to enter if you do it later but you know I have like over a hundred of those I'm not I'm trying to I'm trying to go to Vegas dude I'm trying to go to Vegas and fucking win millions of dollars and be the fucking champ so we get it in fortune is in our favor against ace queen again we flop a 10 and uh yeah now we've got over a hundred big blinds and can try and make a little run at this uh, I fold. I fold. I'm not going to say that every time, but if I go by really quick, then there's nothing um, worth noting. So this one, it looks like on the preflop, there was a raise and a re-raise, and uh, just decided to let the king jack go. Now now that I have that 100 big blind stack, now I'm not going to play quite as crazy. Still going to like look for spots and stuff, and I uh, can't just like fold my way to the win or anything, but versus a raise and a re-raise, uh, King Jack is an okay uh, four bet bluff candidate, especially on the button, but uh, it's not mandatory and it's still early enough. Uh, you're not going to generate a ton of folds or as many as you would like. More on that later. Fold. But yeah, I'm going to show every hand and. Uh, even the folds, but I'll try and skip by those quick so this doesn't drag on. Uh, I, under the gun, open ace-queen suited. The button calls. And never bluff. Bluffs with ace-10 off. We re-jam. And uh, their ace-10 does not beat our ace-queen. And we move right on up. Good to run good. And then there's a raise and a call. We re-raise. 
pocket tens and the small blind. He calls. I bet the flop trying to get paid by a king. The turn is a six and we have a significant amount behind. I think this was like a... Uh, I'm not the greatest at this kind of math. I have it set on big blinds when I play. Uh, this is, I, th I believe it was like a 70-ish big blind shove. Don't don't laugh at me if I'm like way off. I believe it was um, on the turn. I thought about checking. Like I, I talk about this with uh, the homie a lot, a lot of people. Um, if they have a big hand, like if they have a king, like I'm probably at this point in the tournament just going to get the money anyway. If they're floating which you can see here, he had pocket fives. Uh, give him, I think giving him a chance to bluff might be better, but also you also want to build a pot and get paid with pocket tens uh, versus a king. You don't want to let him just check back and have a scare card come or you want to charge the draws and stuff. So I don't hate it. I, I thought about afterwards maybe betting like small or something like 30 bigs and then saving 40 for the river could be better. Um, I went with the shove here. Just I figured a king just wasn't going to fold. And it'd be a pretty nice pot if I won it. And they did not have anything. So still a decent pot. And uh, not going to be results oriented. Results oriented. I'm fine with it. And going to move on. I folded this one. Still a big hand, but whatever. Here's a good one. So we raise the button with ace do suited. Luna calls, big blind calls. So this is kind of what I was talking about. Luna leads again. Um, this is a board 8-4 deuce that's going to favor the blinds. Um, technically, in terms of like they can have sort of, you know, I'm not going to have a ton of like two pairs. But still, them calling in the small blind with hands like, what, 8-4, four, 4-deuce, four 8-deuce. Like, the lead here, even though the board may, quote-unquote, is favor, especially, like, the big blind, but not so much the small blind. So the lead here is really weird. It gets the big blind to fold. Um, I decide to use my uh, big pair advantage, and, you know, I have the deuce blocker. Um, obviously I'm, or maybe it's not obvious i don't know i'm not raising for value here i raise and just thinking that it's that the lead doesn't make a lot of sense in this context like betting into somebody who has like over pairs like yeah i have a wide range and a lot of the times i'm gonna miss but unless they have exactly like a set there just aren't a ton of like big hands that are like excited to get into a big pot here. Like even if you have an eight, you're not going to be like super excited. Uh, Luna tanks uses their time banks and folds. So get a nice one there. If I see something that I think is interesting, even if I fold, I'll try and uh, highlight it. This was just a raise and a call. Yeah. Nothing to see here. Move along. We win and take that one down. Nothing to see here, people. Move along. I'm trying to look and see stuff, but then I also don't want there to be too much dead time. So... If I was cool, I could maybe think of interesting stuff to say in the middle, but we will do what we can. We are only barely human after all. So this one folds to us. We raise ace-five suited, get calls from the cutoff and the big blind. Uh, decide to go for a sneaky, cheeky little check here, uh, which in a multi-way pot uh, should significantly decrease the people's perception of our hand uh, usually betting a hand or check sorry checking a hand like this multi-way is it adds a, a much more layers of a disguise to your hand i have the backdoor nut flush draw i think uh most of the time in a multi-way pot this is supposed to be a bet especially on a draw heavy board but 
I have the philosophy. I like, I don't like to do anything 100%. You want to be capable of stuff in all different situations. I've had some good results with, you know, checking back top pair in a multi-way pot. If you know how to navigate turns and rivers, we get, you know, the perfect turn. We get a five, so we have two pair checks. Now I make my hand look super bluffy. I bet 7,700. You can see under the turn column uh, into a pot of 5,230. And they thought for a little while, they didn't go into the tank, but one of them thought for a little while. It's supposed to look like really bluffy. Um, there's a lot of hands that I think will look me up there. Not like, I don't think ace five is the type of hand that you would put me on here. And then we, on this uh, site, you can rabbit hunt. So when you see the little peel on that five on the river, that means we didn't see the river, but I looked. So we would have made a boat and, uh, yeah, it's good to be able to have hands like this and lines like this. It just makes it tougher for people to play against you. So I like this hand a lot. Go me. You're the man. King Jack suited. Uh, I raised. There was a call, a call, and then a re-raise from the big blind. Uh, just not going to fold. King Jack suited on Club GG. Uh so I called, and uh, they see bet the flop pretty big, and no back doors, no nothing much to think about here. Just let it go. Not in that mindset where I'm looking to get. I'm looking to take calculated risks and gambles and play aggressively, but I'm not trying to just like donk it off for no reason. There's a fold, raise with king queen. And take it down. That's what the flop would have been. When you see that peel, that means we didn't see a flop. But I looked at it. Just a reminder. There was a raise, a call, and a call. And it looks like I squeezed. I'm not sure why it's not showing my second card. But I showed an ace. So I raised, they took it down, or I took it down, they all folded, and that would have been the flop. I think I had like ace deuce or ace three or ace four or something offsuit on this, and so I was just showing them, like, hey, look at me, guys, I have good hand, ha, ha, ha. But I'm not sure why it's not showing the second card. Anyway, on we go. Nice hand for that dude, but we're not involved. It's like there was a raise and an all-in, and they got it in. This one, I remember, could have gone either way. So under the gun, makes a small raise. I think that's 2.1. Not sure. That's what I kind of remember. And there's a call. On the button, King, sense, King 7 suited is strong enough to where you can call it in position. Uh, you can go either way. Uh, I just... I don't use like a randomizer per se, but I like to kind of just be random. Like I like to be capable of both. And this time I just decided I would re-raise it. Looks strong versus a, an under the gun open. And they folded and would have flopped the nut flush draw. So would have continued in that pot no matter what. Uh, like I said, calling has its like advantages and disadvantages. You let the blinds in cheaper you give them an opportunity to squeeze uh you don't have any fold equity pre-flop and you're with a marginal hand in position so i i guess talking it out i kind of lean towards three betting which is probably why i decided to do it but i i don't think uh calling is absolutely terrible if you know how to navigate post-flop a6, there was a raise. I called a call, a call. We all check the flop, just not looking to, not the flop for me, not a, not any black, <laughs> I almost said black doors, back doors that I'm interested in. Uh, they bet the turn, there's a call and we fold. Would have made the ace, but it would have been a not so fun situation. Fold a6 again. This time I decided to re-raise it. There was a raise. I decided to re-raise. Um, 
the suited hands are good. That's that's my deep poker analysis for this hand. Suited hands are good. Uh, this is all obviously on the fly, so I'm like kind of thinking and talking at the same time here. Uh, Ace six suited is uh, the worst of the suited aces, is what I'm trying to say. Um, the wheel suited aces are better. So versus an under the gun raise, uh, it's yeah, you want to equity and playability are important. But if I get four bet, uh, this is a much less painful fold to have to make. Um, so I raised. There was a re-raise. I called, which is interesting. It's, it was a small re-raise, almost like a click back, um, like 4,100, yeah, 4,100 more. So I just decided to play it out. Oh, that I remember this. Sorry. He was short stacked. He was short stacked. Uh, so 34,800 big blinds. So that means he started the hand with 17,000, which is what, like, or maybe, or even less than that because another guy raised. Okay, I remember this hand. So he, like, min re-raised, and it folded back to me. I just decided to call. I did the stop and go. I put them all in on the flop. He only had 5,000 behind. That's, you know, what, four, four-ish, five, no, five-ish bigs. And I was actually ahead. He had king jack, um, and he turned the jack. So that's why, okay, I'm... It's all coming back to me. Uh, you're you're seeing this as I'm seeing this. I'm screen recording and talking into a microphone. So, with short stacks, you know, you kind of just gotta gotta gamble. Um, I like I like the play, and then once uh, once he's giving me the odds with a short stack, you just kind of gotta go for it. It is what it is. Not not tripping, not flipping, not slipping. All right. So, what is next? Oh, okay. I remember this one. Yeah. So under the gun flats, just limps, just in there with a fucking limpy little dick. Uh, middle position makes it 1760, which is an almost min raise. So king six off in the big, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, just decided to call it. Just, I, I like to play post flop, uh, versus weak lines like this. Like somebody limps and then Somebody just makes it a dinky little raise. It's fine. We're, we'll get in there. And under the gun calls. Flop bottom pair. Goes check, check, check. Turns a queen. Um, I'm much more likely to have a queen at this point once it goes check, check, check than they are. So I bet. And under the gun calls. I'm much more likely to have a queen because I'm checking to the pre-flop action. And once they check back, like you saw the ace five hand I had where I checked back top pair, but people don't always do that. You know, if you have a queen in the spot, most of the time, most people are going to bet. The river's a jack, and I do a small block bet. I bet 2,400 into about 10K, hoping that. So the idea being if he has like a seven or something or a six or a bluff, he's either, if he has like nine, eight or something, he's just going to fold. Um, and if he has like a seven, then I get to show down for a small price. If I check, it's not a spot where I'm looking to like bluff catch against like a big size. Um, he raises relatively big makes it uh not quite pot size makes it big and I've videos but um there's a, a lot of people you put them in the spot with the block bet very often where it's like okay calling sucks folding sucks because it's such a small bet i'll just go ahead and try and bluff at it and i've had a lot of success calling these spots down um he had ace jack, which is a hand that makes sense, and uh, I would expect uh, not. Uh, it's an I am. This is a very well played hand by him. Uh, I would expect a lot of people to just be happy to call the river and show down and take it down. This was a very above the rim raise by him, and I called expecting to see bluffs a lot of the time, uh, but. 
playing Ace Jack like this. Uh, that was a very, very well done race. Uh, hats off to this dude in Intrepid. It was very, I don't know what Intrepid means, but it was a very non Intrepid or Intrepid raise, depending on what it means. Uh, come right back. A little Ace King action. There's a call and a raise. We re raise. They call. Get this flop. Uh, it's about pot size behind. I just decide to pot it. Uh, not a board. Like, if we were deeper, this is a board I would just check, not be, like, excited about. But, you know, GG, just trying to take a lot of take a lot of hands down, apply a lot of pressure, get the suspect look up uh, from Ace Jack. Like, a, a lot of, this is different than, you know, big money tournaments. They're used to a lot of people, you know, 50 bucks a month, like I said, just gamble on here. So we actually get looked up by worse and we hold. So that's pretty nice. Was primarily expecting and hoping to just generate folds, but getting paid off by worse is a sweet little bobo bonus. Fold that one. Uh, now we're kind of turning up the pressure a little bit. Uh, got a big stack. We raise seven four suited in the cutoff. Take a small stab on the flop with bottom pair. Uh, they raise, we call, and then they bet. It's gonna be a lot of just like naked one club hands. You gotta float one, and a lot of the like hands that have you beat like a jack on this board aren't necessarily gonna be looking to check raise all the time. Uh, so you know, worth a little, worth a little float ski, and then just let it go. No big deal. Let that one go. There were two calls, and I potted it or whatever pretty close to pot, and they all fold, and I think I... Oh, I remember this one. So so you can do little emojis on Club GG. Somebody gave this, like, uh, squinted eyes, basically saying, like, I'm suspicious, and so I did a little more image manipulation and showed them, like, hey, man, I'm not I'm not a bully. There's, there's nothing to see here. Just a guy getting hands, you know? I'm... Tsk. Definitely wouldn't bully you. I I only play premiums like Ace King of Clubs, so definitely nothing to see here. Uh, we let that one go. Somebody want a nice one? Good for them. Okay, okay, okay. So I was talking about the leads. So there's a min raise. Now the blinds are 500 to 1,000. There's a min raise to 2,000. Small blind calls. We defend. Uh, getting a good price. Uh, these types of hands realize their equity pretty well. If it was like Jack Deuce off or 7-3, I'd probably, you know, I'd just fold. Um, but like to navigate post flop. So this is one of those spots that I was talking about. We're in the big blind and... This board favors us tremendously. Um, I can have... <laughs> that'd be funny if I said I could have 7-3 when I just said I'd fold. I would, I would play 7-3 suited and 7-4 suited probably. Um, not 7-3 off, not 7-4 off. Um, but I can have five, like 5-6, five, 6-7 six, six, I would have the sets I can have. Uh, so I decide to lead this board after the small blind checks. And this dude just shoves all in in my face. Uh, small blind folds and I mean top pair in a gutter I'm not gonna bet five it's five thousand into seven thousand so it's my dad's calling me uh I will talk to you later papa you will see this on a recording and you will understand why I didn't answer um so it's like 20 thousand more into a pod of what is that real quick like 37 so almost two to one which so he has eight seven off uh which people like to gamble and get a little crazy on the sand i'm not gonna knock the guy but it is not a optimal play and we get there and get the six so we've been running really good so far then i'm not trying to like deny that been very fortunate to build a stack but you know i've also like had a lot of tournaments and a lot of things where i get it in good and 
and other people get lucky. So just got to do your best and hope for the best. Did not misclick with a deuce off this time. That is a wonderful thing. I called Jack nine suited versus a middle position raise in the cutoff. And then there was a re-raise from the small blind, decided to see one, and we hit nothing. So they bet big and we fold. Somebody raised all in for 11 bigs, that's why. So under the gun just shoved, uh, didn't gamble with the king 10. Like I said, starting to, I'm not playing crazy. I mean, I'm calculated spots, but I'm not like going wild here anymore. Uh, gets looked up by ace jack and he hits a queen. I raise pocket sixes here, button calls, and the small blind shoves for not much more. We made it 2,000, they shove for 38, and I just isolate. I just shove my whole stack, uh, praying that that dude was not trapping, and we get it in against ace-deuce, 70% favorite preflop, and they hit an ace. So very... Happy and fortunate that that's against a short stack, and we move on. So the button raised 3x, and the small blind, I believe, had gotten eliminated in the last hand, so we're in the big blind and made it a sizable re-raise uh king eight suited these ty this hand class um likes their their candidates to bl bluff preflop because if you get re-raised it's not like a travesty to fold like king nine and king ten and those types of hands are much more playable post flop because of the straight draws on top of all the other stuff that they have so Versus a button, Ray's just decided to go for it, apply some pressure, trying to build a stack. Uh, he calls. Not not a great flop for us, honestly. Like, yeah, we have some back doors and all that stuff, but just smashes. A, it's going to be hard to... Uh, I can get ace highs to fold. But that's in, like, small pairs. That's about it. Um I wouldn't fault small betting this board and uh that's the problem you know is the pot's like already inflated quite a bit because of the sizable re-raise and when they call just wasn't feeling it you know just wasn't feeling it um didn't want to dust my uh my stack off just triple barreling a hand like this so i just i gave it up just didn't have a good feeling about it it's gonna be a lot of hands and draws that they can have that not really we don't want to get involved against um these are these are my thoughts you know these are my analysis like betting here might be the correct play um looking at it now but you know sometimes you just have a feeling gotta roll with it into a little little lull now okay 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 hold on all right so hand of the tournament here hand of the tournament by far so everything i've said so far leads up to this hand and you can see already uh <laughs> if you're if you're looking ahead before i say anything this is this is a wild one this is a wild one strap in so we get Ace jack off under the gun and min raise it. We get a call in the cutoff, a call in the button, and the small blind re raises small. Big blind folds. It's a small re raise. There's a lot of dead money out there. We raised under the gun. I like to press these range advantages sometimes, so I four bet. Make it 20,887 into his 6,600. 3-bet, 
fold, fold, he calls. So then the flop comes king, king, five with two spades. And he just leads out the third pot. Which <laughs> it's so, fr- I, I, I rem- so I was about to go get food. I remember sitting in my car looking at this. It's so frustrating because this lead on the flop into somebody who four bet isn't something you should do. (laughs) Isn't a recommended play. Like I just always have all the ace king here. They very rarely have ace king. Um, I can have aces. I can have queens. So I just I'm looking at this and I'm just look the, like a king should want to slow play if he has like king queen or something or king jack suited. So I'm just looking at this and like it's a substantial part of my stack. But I'm just like he just doesn't have a king here. I'm just I'm gonna play this like I have a king. Like that's it's when he leads out like this. I'm kind of expecting a lead on the turn too. So like I probably should be just be like god damn it dude what the and fold like i know this isn't a king i know that but if i had a king i wouldn't just shove i would just call and let them keep bluffing because their line makes no sense so calling is what i would do with a king so what i should do is just fold but i kind of just decide you know what i'm this, this line doesn't make sense by them. Maybe they'll shut down on the turn. Probably not, but maybe they will. I'm just going to play it like I have a king. So we call. <laughs> they lead out again. 29,000 into 89,000. So about a third pot again. And I'm just like, dude. <laughs> me. So you can see from the next action. I only have about 60,000. So I'd be raising 30,000. And giving them an incredible price. But I'm just, I'm sitting here thinking, I know they don't have a king. If I shove here, like, how do I not have a king? Like, so here's the thing. This type of play, um, strategically against, you know, thinking players, good players, you know, like if this was the actual like WSOP main event and you're against good players, that are going to fold. It's cool, especially in the especially looking back on it. It's cool, I think, to be capable of stuff like this. Like it's hard to play against people who play like this and it's and you just you have to pay them off when they have big hands. Like so many times throughout my poker life, I've gotten into big hands with people and I always I try and be at at the actual table. I'm capable of whatever but if i'm like away talking to people uh, i've said several times in my life like dude it's me you just you got to pay me off like i'm fucking crazy dude like i just i go for it you know sometimes if i if i think something's right and i just thought shoving here looks so strong and it and it does it really does like the the strategic elements are correct um the situation is not correct like i said this is club gg People just aren't going to fold. They're going to be like, oh, well, it's a free tournament, whatever I call. So I like the idea a lot. His line just makes no sense. I like that I have the gusto, the chutzpah, the bowels to go for it. Um, But the situational... uh, Situationally, this wasn't the correct spot to do it. So I'm not sitting here like telling you guys like, oh, I fucking made an awesome play or anything like in the right like in the right situation you know think of it like football if, if you're fourth and one fourth and two and you're going against like the number one rush defense you know it's like yeah okay even if you can run it right at them but it's like it's not the right spot i guess is what i'm trying to say like you can have like the right idea or like maybe you want to do the right thing but it's just not the right time for it but shit gets fucking real and i was reading the barry greenstein book ace on the river and 
my name is A.A. Ron. So we get the ace from space and just fucking bink the three outer and get ourselves a super fat stack. So very, very fortunate hand, the hand of the tournament by far. Incredibly lucky, incredibly fortunate. This isn't, like I said, this isn't just as random and spewy as it looks. Like I'm not saying it's great. I'm not saying, I've like you just heard me say, I'm not saying... I did everything perfect and he's an idiot for fucking calling with queens. Like I should have been aware that a play like this was not going to work at a very high success rate. But also it was just frustrating sitting there just like there's no way this guy has a fucking king. And if I shove here, it looks like a king. So I kind of got a case of the ah, fuck it. It's GG's just like he did. You know, like I said, if this was like the main event or whatever, some big tournament, I think there's a lot of people who are just like, I mean, how is this anything but a king? Uh, the fact that it's a double flush draw board, um, looking at it now, makes that argument soften a little bit. But even so, uh, this is a very strong line. Uh, when I shove that turn, I'm not doing it. Like, you don't have fold equity, so shoving a flush draw there would be crazy. All this to say, I got lucky. And let's fucking move on. So I'm not going to spend, I'm not going to talk about a lot of hands like super long as long as this one, but this was like the hand of the, the tournament. Uh, wild one, absolutely wild one, absolutely lucky. So let's move on. And he, I don't, I, I don't have like a, you can see in the pre-flop thing, uh, they have little things where you can throw things at people so he threw an egg at me which was deserved uh very much deserved after that one i don't plan on doing any really any editing on this video so if you hear me like sipping water or whatever i'm just doing this all in one take so if you hear me fart or anything just uh that's why ace king uh Fold sus in the small blind. We just shove and uh, take it down. It was like a 10, 11, 12-ish big blind shove. Nothing nothing to see here. Move along, people. Starting to heat up a little bit. Uh, under the gun, plus one re-raises. We just call. The small blind calls, big blind calls. There's a check. Big blind goes all in. We have over an over pair and a gut shot. And we re-isolate and get it in against 3-5, middle pair and an open ender. We're 70%, and we hold. So things are looking good. Moving on up. Moving on up. Uh, this was close. I remember this. There's a fold under the gun plus one. Four X's it. And we're deep. Uh, I could. It, I, I thought about calling. Just wasn't feeling it. Uh, an early position. There's a lot of stacks behind that can shove. So just decided to let that one go. Would have flopped an open ender, but it is what it is. Tis what it tis. In the big blind, the button raises. We re-raise and with ace king and they fold. I haven't gotten a hand in like eight or nine hands. This is fucking bullshit, dude. Running bad. My buddy hates when I make that joke when I'm just like running at the fucking top of the world and then all of a sudden I lose one little pot. I'm like, God, just can't catch a break today. It's, <sighs> it's fucking top of the rim. Uh, we min raise. Big blind shoves. We have aces and prove that we are the best fucking poker player in the world. I don't know any other player who could have played aces this perfectly. So go us. We are almost a third of the way there. I'll start ramping up the 
the goodness a little bit. Okay, here. so here's another super interesting one. I remember this one. I'm going to talk about this one a little bit. Um, folds to the small blind. Lim they limp. We... I believe I made it 4x. Yeah, so it says raise 6,000. That means I made it 6,000 more. Uh, so I made it 8,000 total. Flop is 10, 9, 8. So we flop an open ender with two over cards and a backdoor flush draw in a blind versus blind situation, and they lead out, which makes some sense um, when I'm going to have a lot of just like ace highs, a lot of king highs, a lot of like, you know, king, queen type hands, a lot of pairs. Um, I think this board overall favors them. In fact, I know it does because I'm going to be checking back a lot of my like 10, 9, 9, 8 and just trying to play post flop those hands. Uh, if you study, you know, you don't necessarily want to be raising those pre flop. So this lead makes a lot of sense. And this hand uh, was very telling in a lot of ways. So we call our hands too good. Um, could could raise but it's a uh, draw heavy board and uh, i didn't want to get my stack in with just a draw at this particular point so i think it's better i like to play post flop when i can turns an offsuit five and they lead again half pot and same type of logic applies uh river is an offsuit four and they bet what looks to be so i think they so they bet about a third of their stack i think they bet something around uh 11 yeah around 11 something bigs and left themselves 22 behind and this is an interesting spot because of the blocker situation so having a jack we block the straights and like the jack tens and those type of hands, but we also block their missed jacks. Um, I just kind of decided with their double lead and with their bet like that, again, just going back to the other thing I decided to shove here looks really strong. And then blocking queen jack was a good enough reason. Um, Looking at it now, I'm not a super big fan of this shove, but there's another aspect to this. So they end up calling with jack eight, which is third pair. So something that became very apparent is this person studies. This is not a hand that is played by your run of the mill random gambler. Uh, this hand in every way uh, signifies somebody who studies and plays the lead on the flop and the turn, the calling. This is like the perfect type of hand to call with because they block they block what I am representing, you know, queen jack or jack seven or, uh, or not really jack seven. I wouldn't raise that a ton. They're, they're, they block queen jack and they block like pocket eights and uh, the two pairs and sets and stuff. So very excellent call by them to get a huge stack. That's a hundred big blind pot. Um, we still got a fair amount of bigs, but it'll come in later. This is um, very excellent call by them, uh, but it's important to note for later that they are somebody who knows what they're doing. I throw an egg at them and give them a thumbs up because why not? It folds to me and again, king, king high ahead of the small blind. They had a short stack, so we just raise and take it down. If I see myself folding, I'm just going to try and skip on past it. Uh, all right, so the wheels are falling off a little bit here, so... The button three X's. I don't know versus a three X. If versus you have to call versus a min raise versus a three X. I don't know if you have to call Jack eight off here. Uh, I did, 
and a flop middle pair with some back doors. It checks. They check it back. Turns a 10, so we have an open-ended straight draw, although the queen coming isn't good for us. and puts a straight on the board, and any ace beats us, and we also have a flush draw. Bet half pot, uh, figuring versus a check back range. It's a scary board for them. This person makes the call, make a little third-ish blocker type bet on the river, and they make another, Not this isn't the same person, but they make an excellent call with just a jack. When you check back a hand like that, um, when you check back a lot of these hands, you can expect people to put a lot of pressure on you, and that's essentially what I did. Uh, so, you know, got to give it up to them for staying true. And uh, I I would play a queen the same way. I would play... I wouldn't play a king this way. And I would play a 10 this way. A flush, I would probably... A flush or a boat, I would probably uh, shove. Or overbet. But excellent call by them. There's... Definitely some some good players in in this pool. Uh, short stacks in the blinds. It folds to me, and I just shove king high and get it through. Get a little revenge ski. So so this one has a situation. This is it looks like just your standard run of the mill cooler or whatever. But there was actually more to this hand than meets the eye. So the big blind was sitting out, which changes the hand drastically. Uh, it folds to him. And then remember, this is somebody that we've established knows what they're doing that studies. So they four exit. They made it, I remember, they made it 4.4x, I believe that is. And with the big blind sitting out that just looks so much like a steal like i'm it, you can sit here and be like it's kings versus ace queens whatever blah 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 like first of all we're still like relatively deep but the fact that they made their hand look like a steal uh makes this an automatic with ace queen just fucking re-raise so the big blind was sitting out they 4x 4.4 exit or whatever it was I re-raise. They re-raise small, tiny. Uh, I shove ace queen versus this line. Like I said, it, 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 knowing that they're a player that knows what they're doing and that studies, it becomes a leveling war. So they made it 4x. So it looks like they're stealing. I'm re-raising their steal. So it looks like my re-raise is weaker than it normally would be because they're targeting a big blind player who's sitting out. So when they re-raise me, it looks like, oh, he's saying that I'm weak. He thinks that I'm weak because I think that he's weak. So now ace-queen in this situation is just, in my mind, a mandatory go for it. So it's crazy how that one little thing, the big blind sitting out, and him playing his hand, or him or her, playing their hand like this as a 4x, whereas normally kings would be, you know, you would do your standard open, just change the whole dynamic of this hand so we get it in pre, and I flop the queen, and I remember I was shouting, you know, I was like, oh, the club, the club, and it came. And we get some sweet little revenge, but yeah, it's, you know, poker life, poker slash life, it's just such a fragile thing, just like one little thing like that just changes like the whole dynamic of a hand, and Maybe we would have gotten it in anyway. You can you can just simplify it down to that if you want. Be like, dude, it's dude, it's kings versus ace queen. Like, who cares? But um, I like to go deeper. I don't like to just kind of just be like, yeah, whatever, man. Like, it's it's a super interesting hand, and that one little thing just changed the dynamics of all of this. So, what's cool about this is they had this was. Like, there's no doubt in my mind this was calculated by them. Knowing what we know about that Jack-8 hand that they study, they intentionally made, they recognized that the big blind was sitting out. And they intentionally raised more to make their hand look like a steal. 
So that's that's really cool by them. That is like a really really cool next level thing. Seeing oh, just making it 4.4x because the big the big blind sitting out. So come re raise me. I mean clearly I'm just stealing. So some extreme leveling going on. So VJ main whoever you are, well done. I respect it and I got lucky this time. But obviously versus that line uh i'm just getting ace queen in there every time in a tournament like this get it in versus uh get it in a hand versus to uh, vj main again i'm now you know we're cruising a little bit i got the biggest stack at the table by far min raise uh nine eight suited under the gun they defend and i just shove a hand like this um it's not like i, I flop an open ender backdoor flush draw uh, if they have a jack or a 10, they're going to call. But it's not the kind of hand that I want to bet small and have like ace high, just fucking be like, fuck you, check, shove. Like I, I'm happy getting folds here, what I'm saying. I'm happy if I'm called. I'm happy if I'm happy if I get called and I'm live and I'm happy if I get folds with nine high, even against, you know, a hand like ace deuce off. Like I'm happy to get a fold here. So stepping on their throats a little bit at this point. I raise ace jack. Nobody calls. And then the end of our boy. So this is another type of thing where knowing the type of player you're playing against matters. So let me get a little sippy sip. So I min raise with pocket eights under the gun, and they defend the big blind. This is that same person with the jack eight hand from earlier, and the uh, the kings that we talked about. So we know it's a player, uh, a studied player, a good player. Flop comes jack ten eight, and they check. So knowing this is again, you like you all see what I see. Oh. Fucking top and bottom versus bottom set. Whoop de fucking do. You're so good. You know, like like what else is there to talk about? It's a cooler. Like, not really. Not really. Like, yes, in real life, on this flop with these hands, it was gonna go in no matter what. So we could just end it there and be like next hand, but that's not all there is to this hand. So knowing that this is a player that studies, uh, this is a board that if, when they defend the big blind that is supposed to it's not it's not full-on favors them like i can still have hands like king queen and pocket jacks and pocket tens and stuff but it's definitely a board that a lot of hands are going to be uncomfortable on you know all the ace highs uh aren't going to want to play this board uh, a lot of like small pocket pairs uh there's going to be a lot of they can have a lot of two pairs and pairs plus uh, straight draws and stuff like that a lot of high equity hands so traditionally this isn't a board that an under the gun range is going to attack um, extensively so i purposely knowing my opponent now uh, knowing that me betting is going to look really weak i just min bet i bet one big blind and expecting them to attack this bet quite wide now yeah he had two pair and he, he and we get it in and whatever i win but i can almost assure you that there are a lot more hands including like some some garbage that are gonna attack this bet of mine um you know a hand like eight seven you know or king 10 queen 10 like these types of hands uh are gonna shove or raise and commit themselves and get it in so that's the end of uh vj main very i'll have to keep a lookout for them in the future i'll have to try and remember that name but a, a very well played tournament by them and uh just wasn't their day I limped the small blind, which is something I do very wide, and uh, min bet the flop and got them to fold. It's uh, better. I like to have a very wide uh, 
limp strategy in the small blind and minimize the risk of raising and shoving and playing out of position and inflating the pot. Uh, it's something I've had success with, so. We're getting pretty close to uh, the quote unquote money. By money, you mean, uh, I mean, excuse me. You get your ticket back. So uh, this is, you, it's called a final stage ticket. You There's different levels. And uh, so this is like the best ticket you can get. So if you finish 120th in this, you get your ticket back. And then as you move on up, the only the top two get the seats, but you get tickets. So there are people who like, I don't care about the tickets. Like, like I said, I have plenty of them. But starting to use my chip lead a little bit. So I min raise this and take it down. Wonder how long I've been talking at this point. Close to an hour. Go me. I checked. They bet half pot, it looks like. And I. Decided not to go for it. No, they didn't even bet half pot. Oh, I disconnected this hand. Okay, that's right. I was going to call. I was, uh, yeah, I got disconnected. I was changing from, I was putting on my, to my Wi-Fi at my house and I was going to call and then I got disconnected and I was just like, all right, whatever. Not, not the end of the world. I was like, why in the world would I fold that to that? I got disconnected. So. There's one misclick and one disconnect, and then I think all the rest is just pretty standard stuff or pretty normal stuff. This is already going to be long enough. Um, I raise, they call, they check, I bet. Half pot, it looks like, and take it down just being a bully. There's other hands that, like, I, you know, I'm not going to analyze every single hand from like every other person or whatever, even if they look kind of cool. Uh, I'm just going to talk about the ones that I played just so this isn't like a fucking 30 hour video. Can't catch a fucking break. Re raise pocket nines, get it in against ace queen. They make a flush. Just fucking sucks to be the unluckiest person in the world. Sorry, Clint. Had to do it to him. Another fucking genius play. Uh, min raise aces. Big blind just calls. So this is uh, I've on this side. Just I've ran into so many people who flat and limp ace king, and I just have all the like. It's happened, you know, like twenty times in a row or something, and I'm just constantly running into all these people who play like a big hand tricky so this guy just flats the big blind with uh, ace king and then they check raise i just call they check uh, we get in there last little bit on the turn H hope they don't have a flush and they didn't and we hold and it was just nice to beat somebody who played ace king like a tricky little b -b 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 beautiful butterfly raise king deuce Suit it under the gun, take it down, just a big fucking bully. Uh, defend Jack 10, flop top pair, check it around and take it down on the turn. I limp the small blind and bet bottom pair for a min bet and take it down. It's just so much, I like it so much more than like shoving and like putting your stack at risk even versus like you know 20 big blind stacks which this guy has uh more than that uh, significantly more but still it's just it's better than folding and it's better than raising i like it a lot just being bully raise and take it wait did i there was a limp and then i potted it okay so i didn't just raise and take it i was like that looks like more than a whatever so a limp and then i take it down with king 10 wonder if i should add some background music to this or something i don't know anyway 
Being a bully, Ray's 6'7 suited under the gun. Small blind calls, and they just lead out. So two aces come on the flop, and they just lead out. Um, this is a thing that happens so often on GG. It's so weird. Like, there'll be an ace high board or two aces on the board, and people just, like, lead kamikaze into the fucking pre-flop aggressor. So we're a little, um, you know, I've got a stack now. This isn't, it's the same type of thinking as before. Although it's much more credible for them to have an ace when they uh, just call in the small blind, but even so, like leading into the preflop aggressor, just like I, I don't like to let things go like this all the time. So I float, they check, and we bet small on the turn. I'm try, I'm trying to play it like I would play an ace, you know, trying to get value, and then they check the river. None of the flush draws get there, and uh, we put them all in. We overbet shove and put them all in, and they fold. So that I mean that's that's why you don't lead into the the preflop raiser on boards that don't favor you. I mean, when you have players who somewhat know what they're doing, and I like to think I do, they just uh, they either aren't gonna let you get away with it, or you know when I have an ace like this, and they you know want to play that were weak pair like this versus somebody who has a range advantage. It's like, have fun. Good luck. I think we're almost, almost halfway there. The hell happened here. So under the gun limps, apparently folds. There's an all in and I fold out. I'm in the big blind. Okay. That's why queen Jack off. Not going to play. Versus a shove, a decent shove. Being a bully, raised, I, I looked at the flop, I rabbit hunted and would have flopped trip fours, running good. King four again, being a bully, took it down. This is the first one that I, th I think I played kind of bad. So there's a limp, uh, I raised sixes, the button calls. And the big and the under the gun, the person who limped calls. They check. If I remember correctly, so ninety two bigs. What is that? It's a little over twenty bigs. I'm I'm thinking in the moment. I, I with a big stack, I'm probably. I don't know if I'm supposed to just shove this. Honestly, I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, I feel like if I just pod and get it in, I just make it so easy for them to just like, they can just call all their tens and like get a free double up. Uh, I kind of want to keep their range wide and looking, thinking about it now. I don't hate the check. Um, I get to see more stuff. So the button ends up shoving and the big blind folds, which is a big deal. Uh, I would be betting into two players. Uh, now I'm only against one and there's a lot of, you know, like, once I check, I kind of like induce this, like a lot of like weaker hands. Uh, a lot, I, th I expect even like some ace highs, not even just ace highs with flush draws are going to shove here. Just hands like king, queen, probably like shove, try and take it down. So I don't hate it as much as I like remember hating it. Uh, just decided, like I said, there's enough of those hands. I'm just going to call and he had the sevens and got the double up. So that was very... Very smooth by smooth to him one. Sorry if you can hear all my, my sounds and my burps and stuff. Just just a fucking gross manly man over here. Uh raise and take it down it looks like. Raise, flop, uh, small blind calls, they check. We flop a gutter on a relatively dry board, we bet, and take it down. It's good to be chip leader. Raise, see bet a third pot on a board where they're going to have a lot of trash. It's good to be chip leader. Would have, so I, you know, raise under the gun this time. 
they stand up to me finally. They stand up to the bully and shove. I fold. I would have flopped two pair, but don't really care about that. Like I said, if there's like a big hand and you want to pause it or whatever uh, that I don't talk about and read all the action, go ahead. Like you need my fucking permission to do that. Uh, so I min raise, just still being a bully, big blind calls. Uh, this is definitely a situation and why uh, leading on boards of favor works out if they let out here. Like I think they're probably supposed to. Uh, I, I wouldn't have been a bully here. I would have just folded. But then... We just check it back, give up, but then we get a good turn for us because we have a big ace advantage. Um, so decide to bet small, bet like a third-ish pot on the turn and get the fold. So that was a nice little pickup. Oh, saw that I raised, sorry. Uh, I raised, big blind called, check, bet, fold. Yeah, so flop top pair, nothing too crazy to see here. There's a raise and a call. I re-raise. This one I remember being risky and being uh, a little suspect. Uh, under the gun still calls. And there definitely are some hands that beat us here. You know, like you know, king, queen. Like a king isn't going anywhere. Uh, so I, they re-raised. There was a call. And then from the small blind, I re-raised about 5x. 5 point about 5 point no yeah 5x their raise 5.5x their raise um, so this worked out this was a little risky betting this big on the flop I was using my range advantage and you know I would have ace king and king queen and stuff like that and just hoping that they fold have a hand like tens that'll just not want to play for stacks and that is pretty much what happened you look on the flop who I'm playing against and you see what a clever little bitch I am uh, we fold gotta gotta run good to win tournaments you know you gotta gotta have a lot of things go right but you also gotta give yourself a chance for that stuff to happen so do some folding so I was in the garage on the elliptical at this point <laughs> And uh, somebody opened. I had queens in the big blind. I remember that. And then a short stack went all in for like a little bit more. I isolated. I re-raised. The pocket fives folded and got it in against the short stack who had king four. And they made a boat. And it's uh, if you're going to have stuff like that happen, it's good to have it happen against a short stack. We are more than halfway there. I can do simple math sometimes. A, another short stack disaster, but luckily just against a short stack, under the gun, raises. A guy goes all in for less than 10 bigs, we re-raise, and they turn a wheel. So there's different ways to run good in poker, and having my big hands be cracked by short stacks is definitely one of them. Come right back strong. Uh, raise the button, flop a straight, uh, bet the flop and get a call. You want to build pots, not just with the nuts, but nut, uh, hands like I unblock the pairs and stuff. They're going to have all the kings and queens and stuff in their range. So looking to build a pot. The flush draw comes, and I was actually thinking of that. There was that hand between uh, Andrew Robel and Antonius, the, the biggest hand. No, that's not the biggest hand ever, but it was a big hand. Uh, same type of situation. Antonius had a set, and Andrew Robel just kept uh, betting a straight, even though the flush draw came. So I was just, you know, going for it. I'm not, you know, if they have the flush, good for them. Too, too strong to not do anything else. Looks like I'm being a bully again. The queen five suited and taking it down. Have some back doors there. Decent hand uh, can, to bluff with. Kings, getting some biggins, getting some biggins. I raise under the gun. 
There's no small blind in this hand. The big blind calls. They lead out. So this is that type of situation. Uh, they lead out on a board that favors the big blind. People are watching. People are doing their study and they're watching their videos. So good for them. But Kings is just too strong of a hand to fold. I thought about, I think, yeah, okay. So the cutoff and the big blind called. I remember we were three-handed in this. I thought about raising, uh, but against two people who have where their ranges are like on a board that favors them. I didn't think that was nece uh, necessary, so I just called, and then the other guy folded on the turn. He checks. We have the set of kings, uh, you know, I bet, and they fold, but even without that king, it's, uh, you know, if it was anything but like a 7 or a 9 or a 4 or an 8, they probably would have bet anyway. But good, good on you people doing your studying. Uh Something goes right versus a short stack. Somebody opens, another guy shoves. We ISO with 10s, get it in against king 8, against the short stack, and this time we hold. So queen's no good, jack's no good, king's okay, and 10s are good. Almost started, uh, almost started singing there. Shouldn't subject you guys to that. Um, just being a bully, the cutoff opens and uh, we re-raise. They eight six off on the button because we're just big fucking bullies. They call. We're getting pretty close to uh, the bubble here and stuff, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. So they check. Uh, this is actually. So we have the range advantage and all that stuff. But on top of that, the six of diamonds is a key card, uh, which makes this a really good hand to deny equity with. So I bet uh, sizable, uh, looks like three quarters-ish pot. And uh, one of the primary hands that they're going to check raise or check commit with, check shove, is uh, like the six... Uh, six x of diamonds you know something like six seven of diamonds and blocking pocket sixes and all this stuff so this is a a good it's not just a rant it, it i mean it isn't just a random spew it is a random spew with sprinkles on top so there's a little extra motivation to bet a hand like this oh, i'm trying not to drink so much but all this talking i can feel my lips and mouth get dry Trying not to, <clears throat> trying to stay, trying to stay wet for you guys. I know you guys like it when I'm nice and wet in there. So middle position raises, there's a call, or no, 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 sorry, sorry. There's a limp, decide to limp the king nine. I could be a bully and ISO, but again, this is a situation, just mixing it up. Trust my uh, post-flop play. We get a, you know, one of the best flops we can expect to get. Top pair, good kicker, checks through the flop, turns an ace. I stab small. Uh, it's a limped pot, so don't expect a ton of aces in here. Uh, and then the river's a nine, and uh, I shove. It looks like about two and a half X pot. Um, if they happen to have an ace or a nine, like there's no flush draw on the flop or turn, so I'm just shoving, trying to get paid by, in case, like, just because somebody's not likely to have an ace in a limp pot doesn't mean that they can't. And if somebody has a nine, then I'm going to cooler them. So they all folded on there. The, the Raider guy folded on the river, but good, good spot to apply some pressure, some precious pressure. Looks like I folded Jack nine suited there. I'm sure there was a good reason for that. It's fold, it's fold. Here's okay, so relatively ish interesting one. I raise looks like under the gun plus one and the big blind calls. Comes King Queen Jack, uh, smashes my range, uh, as the pre flop aggressor of all the sets, all the two pairs, all that shit, and they can have some stuff like it's not like they can't have hands here but definitely a board i want to bet so i do i bet i size up with my 
range advantage and with my equity draw, they call turns an eight and they check. I decided to check not even like at this point, like I just, I don't think a king is going to fold like a, I've played with this player before. Like you want to have some sort of like fold equity. I can get, I can get a queen or a jack to like fold, you know, but like, I mean, is there like a ton of those really? Like, I guess there could be like, I bet pretty big on the flop. Um, so it's, it's close. Like I, I don't want to, I wanted to realize my equity. I felt like having the 10, uh, Kind of just wanted to realize the equity and uh, i didn't want they had a decent ish stack so i didn't want a triple barrel and, I didn't, and against a uh, king it was kind of my main reason for checking it back and then you can see so the river comes they check and you can see the there's a little thing that says nine seconds under the river column i took my time bank down pretty far i was really i was in the vortex of like wanting to bluff but i just didn't think they were going to fold a king so I was like, how many queens and jacks can I get to fold? And then I was thinking, how much showdown value do I actually have with my eight? And I was, the only, I think the only reason I ended up, it's because I took so long. Like the only reason I ended up checking is I just, I don't, I just didn't feel instinctively like it was credible anymore. Like it wasn't like a tank for like balance. It was like a tank of just like, oh, I really feel like there's a lot of merit to bluffing here. But, and I don't know how much, showdown value i have as opposed to fold equity so it's a tough calculation to make like in the moment i just decided you know what i just you know if they have jack nine and i just let them have it then i'll live with that i think i got pretty fortunate that they had a hand like they did i'm not sure if that hand should be called on the flop uh with the backdoor flush draw i guess you know whatever do you but uh once they called on the flop i just didn't expect a lot of hands like uh like jack nine or like queen fucking seven or anything i mean yeah anyway interesting hand uh, i wouldn't fault you for uh barreling the turn with your equity i just didn't want to get shoved on like and then also yeah maybe it is a shove especially the heart combo i don't know interesting interesting hand super interesting hand but i feel i feel like i got lucky to win it at showdown overall but i was expecting very often to be i didn't basically the crux of this hand i didn't think like king four suited was gonna fold it just i didn't feel like i could get a king to fold if i felt like i had enough fold equity to get a weak king to fold then i would have shoved but just knowing this player they're a capable opponent i just i didn't think a king was gonna fold so uh, i was hoping you know yeah yeah it's the end of that i called with ace 10 it looks like called a 3x raise and then flop favors me in the big one so i let out and they uh the start of jt man jt man said none of that and raised all in it looks like and i folded but uh this is not the last we will see of jt man 21 went on to do some very crazy things I limped and they raised. So sometimes you can't always just limp that, take it down. They raised and didn't give them any resistance. Uh, East King versus Ace Jack. So there was a limp from the guy on well, the hand that I just talked about with King Queen Jack. And then somebody shoved, looks like 10 bigs, and Ace King held against Ace Jack. Hooray. Pre-flop, I took it down with ace-queen. Raised pocket nines, got some calls. This was a, a form of run good, uh, even though the button small blind and big blind called. Uh, I bet small on the flop and got them all to fold, so 
in a multi-way pot, like you can expect people to have one, you can expect one person to have a queen fairly often. Uh, the cool, they're the reason I think if it, if it was pocket eights, I might lean towards a check like of pot control slash essentially like giving up, but uh, betting gives me a chance to win the pot, which ended up happened, which ended up happening. And then also if I hit my nine, if I hit one of my two nines, it's a clean out with no reverse implied odds on a board like this. So if I have like pocket eights and I hit an eight, then six, seven makes the nuts and I'm just going to double them up unless I boat up. But if I hit a nine, it's super clean. Um, it doesn't complete any draws. So that was kind of the tiebreaker. A lot of times I might check a hand like this and just be like, hey, in a multi-way pot, this isn't a spot where I really want to get too wild it's tough to play against four against three other people but worked out that time adversity <laughs> adversity so everything's going handy dandy this nasty b person right here uh had literally just said that i was running super good it doesn't show the chat here but they said that as uh, they raised under the gun, I called and then I typed all skill and let out on this slop. So kind of the main one of the main themes of this video, you see a lot of people there. It's kind of what all the big poker creators and solvers are talking about and teaching, uh, leading on these types of boards that favor you. So I'm in the big blind and this board favors me. I have equity. So I lead out pretty big. They raise... Uh, I shove, so this I remember this was like a seventy-ish big blind pot, and I get it in as a favorite on the flop. Fifty-four um, percent. I mean, not a huge favorite, but still a favorite, and uh, we do not get there. So, still got a decent stack, but the first real sense of uh, of adversity. But you know, we try to keep it together. Oh, I th that was a nasty one, if I remember correctly. Oh, no, never mind. I do not remember correctly. Uh, middle position raises. Don't feel like getting wild with uh, a 7 off on the button. Raise ace-king and take it down. Uh, JT man gets us again. We raise, they shove, we fold. We're, we're getting there. We're approaching the end here. Uh, this was just a simple range advantage thing. Like I raised, uh, min raise with queen jack, flop top pair. I bet. We get a call, and then the turn's an ace, and just we, you know, you're supposed to barrel after you see bed, and then you hit your ace. You're supposed to continuation bed. So even though my hand had some like showdown value, uh, I just barreled and took it down there. So getting back into it. Here's another piece of adversity. So min raise the king four in the hijack, king four suited. Uh, the big blind defends. They check. Uh, not a spot where you want to play an inflated pot. They can have a lot of tens, and this is a good candidate to check back. Uh, not a ton you need to protect against. So, uh, yeah, I, that's that's the thought process. It's a I feel like it's a relatively standard check back. But uh, the turn comes. They bet sizable. So this is kind of what I talked about earlier when you underrep your hand. Uh, people attack that, so it's a pretty standard call. The river isn't standard, so the backdoor flush draw gets there, and they bet pot, which was most of their stack. You can see I took my timer down pretty far. With the backdoor flush draw getting there, it just sucks, man. It sucks. Like, I've underrep my hand. There's a lot of just random air and a lot of, like, hands like Queen Jack. or just, There's a lot of hands that miss with the backdoor flush right in there i you know i thought about this one for a while i just think when it's under i think you just have to side call ultimately i could have maybe gotten away on the river it's just 
not people are gonna just take advantage of that though if you check back in a situation like this with top pair like it's a like you there's a lot of it's a paired board and there's a it's a high card board on the preflop razor so with a lot of like garbage and a lot of draws like I'm gonna bet and just try and take it down so that when they check back it's you they can put a lot of pressure on you I I think there's a lot of players who are better than me that uh, would find a fold on this river. Um, you know, and props to them if they do. Uh, it, it was really close. Really close. I was not excited about calling, but I just, you know, I've, I've been in too many of these spots where I just bleh, call, and then I'm like, okay, well, I'm glad I did. Clearly they were just being a clearly they were bullying so not super stressed about that one uh raise under the gun big blind defends get two overs straight draw backdoor flush draw and we pot it uh don't want to don't want to get check raised uh so bet pretty big and take it down There is a limp and a call, and I make it pretty big out of the big blind and with ace jack, and they fold. I raise small blind. JT man defends. Uh, we on a paired board with a back door too high flush draw just see bed and hope to take it down and he does not give us problems for once in his fucking life and we take it down raise king 10 there's a bunch of calls and dude just leads right on out from the small blind into a dry ace high board and this time we don't have it and it's a big ass bet so don't have any room to maneuver and we just have to let it go but i'm just telling you people just do stuff like this and uh you know i mean it's a cool if you have like four or five suited and you're trying to get paid by an ace i mean i guess that's something but i don't know just, people are people are crazy people are reckless so <laughs> uh hopefully the mic didn't pick that up uh you did it's pretty funny so this person raises there's a bunch of calls king six off yeah can probably let it go uh but i decide to just play get in incredible odds try and cooler some people get the you know king six deuce flop or whatever uh flop a gutter Checks around, check. Somebody bets big and we fold. Nothing crazy there. Uh, there's a call from the cutoff. Call the small blind. Somebody bets and we fold. Again, nothing crazy there. Am I being a bully again? Yep, looks like I'm being a bully. Raise and take it preflop. Would have flopped a flush. My psychic powers were not working at that moment. Oh no, 10% battery remaining. Crap. Um, okay, I'm most likely going to edit this part out, but I'm going to go get my charger real quick because I don't want this to die and have to do this all over again. All right, I'm back. So, GG and the microphone. So, draining the battery pretty fast. How fast? Fast. Like car. So, <sighs> breath just from going up those stairs. So, the cutoff raises. We don't. Jack, it's a uh, 
good enough to play post flop. We get middle pair on an ace high board, which is super scary. We check, they bet on the flop, can't fold for just one bet. Turns a six, like I'm I remember being pretty nervous at this point. I mean, you know, don't really want to just like pay off an ace on a triple barrel of the second pair, but we check, they check it back. Uh, block bet. It looks like around a quarter-ish pot on the on the river, and they just fold. So that's always a relief. Second pair on an A-side board, taking it down. Guess I need to speed up before this thing dies. Been trying to give good quality analysis or whatever. So I'm in rays. JT man, fucking three bets small. I thought about shoving here. I really did. Ace four suited. It's a good candidate. This guy's been kind of whatever. I even, so just call because it's such a small re-raise and we're in position. And we get the gutter ball backdoor flush draw. I'm being results oriented here because like he bets uh, half pot and I just let it go. You can see he bet 117,000. I only got 422,000. It's, I would have called and binked the three and you know, oh, what could have been, should have been, would have been, blah, 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 but can't be results oriented, you know. Uh, it would have worked out, but it would have been, uh, we're pretty deep in the tournament now. It just would have been reckless and unnecessary. The only thing that leans it towards it is JT man's been a little crazy, but just one of those, oh, what could have been, and move on. Uh, def cut off, and we just defended. Uh, I'd given up on the flop. Just check. We hit a seven, uh, so we, che we check, and they bet small. We call. Get the check check on the river, and they have eights, so it's all falling apart. We got under 20 bigs now, but, you know, we're keeping our head up. Uh, there was a shove. Not playing ace too suited to a shove. Okay, okay, okay. So enough was enough. I had enough of this shit. This is kind of... it's This is like a culmination of everything, so getting short things are starting to look bad you know missed out on a couple well, what could have been taking a couple beats these people leading into these ace high boards so it folds to us and we're you know what did we have last hand Three hundred twenty thousand. so what is that sorry um 16 bigs or something 16 and 17 18 bigs to start the hand depending on Annie's and all that stuff. So it folds to us on the button. Instead of just, I don't want to shove and put my whole stack at risk, but I'm at the point where taking down the blinds and small stuff will like start to matter. So I just min-raise, uh, not wanting to put my whole stack at risk, but wanting to take advantage of my skill and positional advantages. The big blind just calls. And the flop comes ace, king, nine, rainbow. And this dude just fucking leads in half pot. So, <laughs> like, what the fuck, dude? Like, me raising off of a stack like that, like, all sorts of alarm bells should be, like, going off for people. Like, this board just smashes my range, and somebody just leading into me like this just makes no fucking sense. Like, especially this late in the tournament, like, so much on the line. So I just, I've had enough of this shit, you know? Like, this wasn't tilt. This was just, like, when you do shit like this, it doesn't work well for you. Like, there's a reason you're not supposed to do stuff like this, and I just had to make him fucking pay for it. So I call. The turn's a nine, which isn't the greatest card in the uh, world now. If he had some lead with some kind of nine for some stupid reason, he has trips. And then if he had, like, ace, deuce, you know, now it's now getting an ace to fold is essentially impossible is the point. Um but I'm short stacked. He's going to raise most of his aces. Like like I said, none of this just makes any sense at all. I bet super small on the turn. I bet like 3.5 bigs, I believe it was, leaving myself behind. I don't. I think it was like 
I for, I, it was somewhere around like 10 or 9 or 8 or whatever. And he gets the full, and he folds. And it's just th- at this point, you know, in this tournament, like I'm, I feel like I'm right back in it, you know, like I'm back above 20 bigs now, like getting a hand like this to actually like go through is massive in a, in a spot like this. So this is one of those ones where people talk about, Please tell me my shit's not... Okay, it's charging. We're good. We're good. We're good. So it's charging slow, but it's not going to die. That's the important thing. So this is one of those spots where you hear people talk about it isn't the cards, you know, like it isn't just the cards, you know, like you got to... Like nobody, you know, you could ask the top 100 players in the world, you know, to look at this hand. Nobody would say I have queen three off here. Um... There's more to poker than just the cards you're dealt. And you play with fire, you're going to get burned. I mean, you just you lead into people when you have all these, like, disadvantages. You play, you just try and play lines that, like, don't make sense. Like, eventually it's going to catch up to you. So I'm proud of this one. Uh, this is kind of like... Um, we're getting deeper, you know, in the tournament. Like, there's starting to be, like, stakes. This isn't the same as the ace-jack hand, you know. Like, it's starting to matter. These decisions are starting to matter. And uh, you can't just be reckless and just uh, do whatever you want and get away with it. So, this was a very big uh, momentum shift, momentum swing for me in this tournament. And then very next hand, uh, it was a... Somebody raised and we shoved ace king suited and uh, took it down. Was thinking how cool it would have been if I, you know, boost my stack up on that last hand and then the next hand get a nice double up. But still, happy to take that one down. Um, under the gun one. Plus one raises. We are in the small. No, he limps. Not JT man limps. Sorry. We're in the small blind and we complete. And the big blind just. Yeah. Okay. So this, you know, JT man, the legend of JT man. So he just limps under the gun plus one. And I limp and the big blind shoves 20 bigs. And JT Man just has no fear. I remember it wasn't like a tank. Like you can, there's no clock little emoji thing on here. Dude just snaps him off with Ace Eight suited and holds. Just no fear at all. So good on you, JT Man. Just recognized, I guess, that it's a good steal spot, and he's gonna take his sixty, not even sixty, his fifty five point five four percent, and just be happy. <sighs> yeah. Well done. I'm going to be so mad if I like go through all this and like the re- microphone wasn't working or something. I tested it, but anyway. I raise and take it down, it looks like. Yeah, so the there were a couple short stacks, and uh, I raised. I remember this. And then the short stack like kind of laughed and was like, showed the deuce three off. You can see there, next hand I get aces. Yep, raise and take it down. I was hoping because I raised earlier it might get a little more credit, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, but, yeah. And then things are looking up. We get a walk the very next hand with a six off. Always good to get free chips this, uh, this late in the tournament. I another so I mean I raised the person re-raised and we folded and you can see we would have flopped two pair this one doesn't sting a little bit I mean like ace deuce off like I'm never gonna call or shove there it's not a I don't have a maybe maybe a little bit of fold equity but you know we're just gonna assume they had pocket kings and uh like I don't feel like I missed out on this one Yours is so that small blind limping strategy. So do it with all types of hands. Uh, Keep it disguised. So we limp the small blind after it folds to us. 
flop middle pair with a backdoor flush draw, do the one one big blind min bet. Going to be ahead of a, a big blind range that checks back pre-flop. Uh, and they call. Turns a four. So we make two pair and a disguised two pair at that. Not going to expect to have a ton of two pairs. Uh, so we check. They bet uh, half pot and we shove a lot of uh, a lot of you know different kinds of things going on here but it ends up being a cooler they have top pair and a flush draw and we hold so we're whew, right back in this thing i think so what is that 50 bigs 25,000 times 10 40 bigs math genius here 40 bigs Go ahead and go ahead and laugh at me. I'm a I'm a feel player. I'm not a math player, so yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Um, hold up that one. We're getting towards the end here. We're getting to the last like couple tables. Uh, my raise, it was another short stack, yeah, raised to 60000 They went all in for 158000 so we called and did not hit. Okay, so sorry, I just randomly got booted off of there. Hopefully, it looks like everything's still working, the microphone's still on, still screen recording, so hopefully everything works out in the end, but let's keep going and bring this bad boy home. Um, raised, they shoved, and we do not call. This was another interesting one. So probably the biggest growth and like shift in my like whole poker life has been small pocket pairs. Just the more you study these, just like the tighter you have to be with these. So I was actually planning on folding this and then under the gun limped. Uh, so I, I had around like 20 ish bigs, I think at this point, I, you know, I don't want to put my whole stack on the line at this point with just a, just a small pair. I decided to limp and try and see a cheap flop. And then the guy to my left raised something a little under nine bigs. And I remember thinking, you know, like, oh, you got to win like versus two limps. I got a smaller stacks, like in a gonna steal a lot wider um we they could have bigger pocket pairs but i just remember thinking ah eh, you know i'm gonna probably gamble against this guy but then the big blind ended up shoving and versus you know versus two people obviously you just can't get in threes uh, i would have flopped the boat it's nice to live in that world where i can think like oh if the big blind or the under the gun limped if i just would have shoved you know like i would have doubled up versus kings and blah 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 but that doesn't mean it would have been a good play so i tried to see a cheap little flop and uh, it almost worked i, I would have gambled against uh, this mean joe green guy with ace nine who ended up sucking out on the kings but against two people just sometimes there's nothing you can do as we go on to hand number 300 would have made a straight uh but early position just not gonna play queen 10 off in this spot got a icm is starting to become a factor like i'm starting like preserving the stack is starting to become more valuable than picking up individual pots uh, at this stack depth of 20 big blinds. Uh, again, still need to like finish top two. It's like I'm not going to play just like crazy tight and fold my stack away, but not going to be super reckless either. And as we say that, uh, our late-ish, the hijack uh, raises 3x and uh, ace 10 off in the big blind. We shove it. They have ace king and uh, we flop a 10 and hold. So just uh just got to get lucky in tournaments you know this is this is just pure luck uh i think they're gonna fold a lot but when they do have a hand and you run into it you know you just got to get lucky so no uh no justifications here just uh got incredibly lucky and uh really thought it was my day at this point you know it was really 
I posted a status on Facebook, you know, or earlier saying, uh, I'm going to win this tournament. And when I do, I'm going to make a video detailing all the hands. So that was very lucky. Uh, win with pocket jacks. Uh, check, I checked the big blind and, uh, just not very credible. We just all ended up checking it down and, uh, didn't even think about wanting to take a stab. Uh, ace high might, if I try and rep on the river, I thought about briefly like over betting just cause they weren't showing a lot of, uh, strength, but even ace high might call me or just my line on this board just doesn't make a ton of sense and it's not very credible. I shoved the small blind. So the big blind, you had less than 20 bigs, and I shove ace 10 and take it down. I thought about being a bully here with the 9 4 off, but I thought that hand was just a little too weak. And then, you know, they have the damn rabbit hunt, and I would have flopped two pair. Uh, not going to be results oriented. Uh, if it was nine, even 9 4 suited, like having the stack I have now after all that's like happened after that double up, I would have bullied on the button, but nine four, just those garbage hands. Like you could argue maybe raising any two, especially uh, when the big blind has like a big stack and is, uh... yeah, I don't know, just too weak of a hand. This was a clutch one. So Lena from, I believe that's the same Lena from earlier. So I decided to be a bully with this one, and I raised to min raised to eighty thousand. That uh, this guy calls the cutoff calls, and then it was only like three bigs more. Lovely enough, was short stacked for like five bigs, a little over five bigs, and they shove. I thought about ISO wing. I thought about folding just because my hand. When I call, I'm relatively capped, and I open it up for the other guy to just kind of isolate and push me off it. Decided it's just too good of a price. I called, he called, and we just we ended. It went very fast. Check, 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 and uh, got it. Uh, my middle pair no kicker held against a uh, two pocket pair, so that was a that was a clutch pot. Knocked the player out and uh, chipped up quite a bit. Um, I limped, they raised, and I folded. Uh, Could have shoved. Like like I said, uh, I'm, it's at the point now. Like I'm a, I'm towards a top stack. There's only a couple tables left. Uh, I don't want to just be reckless and uh, double somebody up. Like it's getting to the point now where skill starts to matter, and uh, I don't want to just take these like super close spots. Like, yeah, maybe if I shove it in the long term, it's a profitable shove in terms of chips. But if I just give away half my stack against some guy who just calls it with ace high, it's like I, there's. I feel like it's better to just not uh, put my stack at risk when I don't necessarily have to. Um, This was cool. Uh, they 3X'd it. I defended Jack 10 and we check it down and uh, turn it. I was so I was given up on the flop. I thought about uh, if they see bet, I was going to min raise. I was thinking, I wasn't going to, I was thinking about it might be a good spot to check raise a uh, small uh, solver stuff. You know, check it, the, the way all the videos put it, it check raises like a gangster. So. Thought it was a good spot in Canada to consider it, but they check behind and then I hit the 10 and then just pot control from there and uh, take it down. This was a cool one. So I raised and I talked about falling into the traps against people who have ace king. So the big blind just flats with ace king suited. Uh, comes jack nine eight. 
with two diamonds and they check uh it's a good check behind spot um i don't want to get i don't want to bet small and get like check raise and just like there's no point in getting it in against a jack and then like everything else i'm either ahead of or have like decent equity against so it's better to pot control here uh, check behind it's a nine uh, once I check behind obviously I still have equity I'm still ahead of a bunch they bet 150,000 on the turn we call get the fucking money card uh, ten of diamonds we make a boat they lead out we shove or we put them all in and they call with uh, the ace high flush and yeah, that was the absolute money card so we're you know things got tough there for a minute but we're we're rolling we're keeping it going, and uh, we're we're peaking now. Uh, there was a an open, a min raise, and I three bet small, which is a new thing to my repertoire, but I've learned is good to do late in these tournaments, and uh, we take that down. You can see JT Man is to my left. Some people call that foreshadowing. You may remember him from earlier hands. Um. Yeah, min raise eights. Somebody called, and then a, a short stack shoves. We isolate, and they have tens. Flop a set. They flop a set. Nothing too crazy here. Uh, again, lucky to lose versus a relative short stack. Uh, I check my option, and people get wild on the flops. I JT money. I decide not to <laughs> JT money. JT man uh, there's a guy I play with live named J Money it's pretty funny anyway alright so I know what's coming next and that uh, uh damn you JT man so folds to us we're on the button with ace nine suited the big blind has like 11 bigs but JT man's got a big stack so like before this hand let's see we he's got like more than more than half my stack so started with like around 1.5 million to my so what is that like 30 bigs like i just thought ace nine suited so here's the thing results oriented like looking at this hand it's you know oh yeah if i if i shove probably just take it down keep my keep my big chip lead going whoop de doo but if I shove and he just like calls the ace jack, like I feel like a fucking idiot. Like why did I put all that money at risk? Like the 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 good players, the skilled players, your edge, you know, like you want to navigate post flop. So I min raise, he flats with nine six suited late in the tournament. Not <sighs> I'm not I don't like to bash people. Not I'll just say it's not a standard call, not a call I would recommend you make in your real life, but if you are going to do it, I do recommend that the flop comes 965 and the other person has top pair top kicker. He checks, I bet pot and he shoves and just can't fold, especially against a fucking crazy guy. And we do not get there. I This was the first time in the tournament I actually got audibly upset and mad. Just not thrilled. But still have uh, a decent stack. So, you know, got to get over it quick. Uh, a helpful mindset, I say. I say this to friends all the time. A helpful way to think about it is you have plenty of time to get mad about it after the tournament. But... Can't worry too much about it now, so just tried to move on. Bounce back with a nice little steal. These are always good momentum boosters. I min raise uh, the big blind defense, do a small bet, and get a nice little pot after that, so feeling good. Uh, yeah, just didn't want to. I'm trying to preserve my stack here. Didn't want to play Jack 8 suited. Too many big stacks are going to bully. 
Um, yeah, so you can see we're getting close to the end here. Uh, I keep it alive a little longer. I raise kings, they defend, and then I bet and they fold. And then, so we're almost there, yeah. So I, middle position, raises, I shove ace jack from the big blind, take it down. Four nine of hearts. I I kind of made it a thing. I love the 49ers, so like I try and play that hand on GG, uh, like in the ones that don't matter, the lower stakes ones. But obviously not the time to do something like that. And Minray's under the gun. Ace King suited, feeling good, about to get back into it. Our man, JT man, just shoves next to act. You know, got like 18-ish bigs, nothing we can really do. We call. He has the kings. We even turn the straight draw and the flush draw. But alas, it is not our day. And the next hand, I'm in the big blind. I only have like one big behind. And he finishes us off with the nut flop straight. So to that, I finished 10th, the top tournament it was extremely bitter and disappointing um just the last few things to say i know this has been a super long video to wrap this up um i'm not in any way complaining like obviously i got lucky in a whole bunch of spots to even get this far like i'm not complaining i'm just disappointed you know like i care a lot about poker it's been a dream of mine to play in the main event. I've come close before. Uh, when I lived in Vegas, I had shoved 20 bigs. I was four away from getting a seat to the main event. I shoved 20 bigs with pocket kings and ran into aces. So, like, just getting this close again, it's hard to not feel disappointed. Um, I had a really good day, like, overall. For those of you who have been following this whole YouTube thing, like, I'm in the middle of a vicious, like, weight loss thing and uh, really just trying to better myself. Um so I just, I had a really good day. I was feeling really good. I felt like this was my day and I was going to take this down. Like I posted that status on Facebook. I was going to make this video if I won. And uh, I almost didn't make this video, but I kind of decided afterwards, you know what, because I don't want to, because normally I would just be a, be a sad little panda and just, you know, fuck everything and just want to go to bed. I decided, you know what, even though even though I didn't make it, I came close. It was still a really interesting tournament with a lot of interesting hands and a lot of cool, interesting spots. So I'm trying to be a better version of myself, not let negative things get me down so much. So I decided it would be a good exercise and a good practice to make the video anyway. You just you have to get lucky, incredibly lucky in tournaments to win a tournament. Um, and I got lucky in a ton of spots to even give myself a chance. And uh, even when things went bad, I kept it together. And uh, I'm very happy with my performance. And although I'm disappointed right now, uh, I can promise this will not be the end of me. There's still a whole bunch of these to play. And hopefully the next time I make a video like this, we will finish it off right. And it will end with me getting the seat and going to play to become the poker champion of the world. So if you made it this far, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the hands and maybe who knows, even learned a thing or two, had a chuckle or two and I'm going to sign off now. So peace out.